The Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering would like to present this video on the axial loading of columns with different lengths and support conditions. For this experiment we will be testing 10 column specimens. The first 7, as you can see, have a range of different lengths. These will all be tested with pin supports on both ends. For specimens 8, 9, and 10, they have approximately the same length. These will be tested in the pin-pin, pin-fixed, and fixed-fixed support conditions respectively. The first step is to record the dimensions of each specimen. For each of the columns, measure and record the depth B and thickness H at three points along the length. Calculate the average of each set of three measurements and then the cross-sectional area of each specimen. Measure the effective length, or L prime, of each column using a ruler. To do this, first assemble the supports for each column. With these pin ends that we are attaching to the end of each column, the whole of the support is free to rotate. Therefore, the effective length of the column must include it. With fixed ends, the column is held in place and is not free to rotate or displace at all within the fixture. The effective length is therefore calculated from the inside edge. Calculate the moment of inertia of each column. Calculate the radius of gyration of each column. Run the test for each column and record the experimental failure load, or p-critical. Here is a pinned pinned column being tested. Here is the fixed fixed column being tested. From the maximum load, calculate the experimental stress based on a modulus of elasticity for steel of 200 gigapascals. Calculate the theoretical failure stress of each column by using this formula. Don't forget to multiply this value by k, depending on the support conditions. k is equal to 1 for pinned pinned, 0 0.7 for pinned fixed, and 0 0.5 for fixed fixed columns. From this, calculate the theoretical failure load. Plot experimental failure stress against the theoretical failure curve. Finally, calculate the experimental value of k and compare it with the recommended values. 